Secretary Blinken has both immediate and longer range tasks before him. And if he looks tired, which he does, it's because he is tired. This is not easy work. He needs to keep things from flying completely apart in the Middle East. To counsel the Israelis to have due and frankly better regard for the civilian casualties of their military operations against Hamas. He will, if he can, try to negotiate, I suspect, a new ceasefire to resume the exchange of Israeli prisoners and Hamas hostages. And he has to do all of this with his eye on the ball of a an actual settlement. It will take massive amounts of time and energy, and that is the fate of U.S. Secretaries of State. I remember that Henry Kissinger made nonstop diplomacy his means of trying to bring an end to the Yom Kippur War in, 19, in 1973, mm -hmm. to stabilize things between Israel and its neighbors, and to set the stage, as it turned out, for more progress ahead, ending ultimately in the Israel-Egyptian peace that was signed uh, at Camp David during the administration of Jimmy Carter. So <clears throat> that kind of statecraft, Kissingerian short-term statecraft that hopefully improves things in the immediate term and set the stage for sets the stage for progress in the medium and longer term mm -hmm. is what the U.S. administration is faced with, and they're they're doing it. I mean, they're trying. You can see that with uh, CIA Director Bill Burns yeah. in the Middle East and Tony Blinken working with the Israelis. The administration is doing what American administrations do in the world in general and in the Middle East in particular. We, not the Chinese, not the Russians, have the ability to move things forward, and that's what we're trying to do. Does Kissingerian also imply continued shuttle diplomacy? Secretary of State Blinken will be living on a plane, whether it's Egypt, uh, whether it's Qatar, whether it's Israel. He's going to have to stay in the region. Well, I don't want to predict things in too much detail, but yeah, I would not expect uh, Secretary Blinken to sp be spending a lot of time with his children at home. Mm. Got it. Um, that said, what do you make of the CIA director being in the middle of this ambassador? He's not a diplomat, but our chief intelligence uh, but official has been in the middle of this entire deal-making process in Qatar. Ah, uh, but uh, Bill Burns was indeed a diplomat. He is not a career intelligence official. He's a foreign service officer like I was for sure. 40 years. Understood. That's not uh, his job now, though. No, but he was an expert on Russia and the Middle East and the Middle East. He brings a credibility and a depth of knowledge. And frankly, it's not a bad idea to use all the assets you've got. Yes, I I detected in your question a bit of surprise that a CIA director would be engaged in what is frankly diplomacy. But when you've got, when you're dealing with a situation like the U.S. is dealing with in the Middle East, you want all the assets you have to be working full out to try to make things better. Mm -hmm. And Bill Burns has a lot of credibility in the region. He knows it well. And I, I'm glad he's he's all in. Ambassador Free, the Wall Street Journal is reporting today, pretty remarkable when you consider the worries that many have had about a second or third front opening that Israel's intelligence services are preparing to go throughout the region, if not around the world, to kill, to assassinate Hamas leaders. Uh, setting the stage, as the journal writes, for a years long campaign to find those responsible for the October attack, that means hunting down people in Lebanon, in Turkey, in Qatar, maybe even Russia. Knowing Israel's history with assassinations, particularly against uh, Hamas leaders that have even included a remote control rifle at one point to kill a nuclear scientist in Iran. How worried does that make you uh, about a second or third front opening? Israel was attacked by 
Hamas. Hamas is not a government. Hamas is a terrorist group, and its brutality was on display. Mm -hmm. If you asked me what of my preference, I would rather have Israel engaged in targeted, discrete actions rather than wholesale bombing, which kills lots of civilians. Israel's options aren't good. The United States has rightly been pushing the Israelis to, to up its game with respect to the Gaza military operations and not create so much death and destruction. So we cannot tell the Israelis at the same time to act in a precise manner and then not act in a precise manner against Hamas. Mm -hmm. Hamas is an enemy of all. I'd rather have the Israelis focused on a legitimate target than going after targets in Gaza, which end up with a lot of innocent Palestinians Understood. dead, displaced, or injured. How about that? I only have a minute left, Ambassador. I don't want to rush you out here. But the New York Times, meantime, is reporting that Israel actually possessed Hamas's detailed attack plan uh, yes. for October 7 for more than a year decided it wouldn't likely become reality. To what extent um, is this an intelligence failure? Oh, it is a big intelligence failure. I am sadly familiar with instances in which intelligence analysts have correctly discerned an adversary's intentions only to be ignored by the system. Hmm. I've seen this, I have some personal experience with this from my own career. It happens. It was a failure because the intelligence assessments, according to the New York Times, and the article felt right to me, hmm. according to that article, the intelligence assessments coming up collided with a preset series of judgments and prejudices from the Israeli establishment hmm. that Hamas was incapable of conducting such, a, such an operation and that Hamas was intimidated by Israel. Yes, this right. was an error of judgment. I've seen these errors before, including in my own government. 